Just got your Poffin guitars templates. I've got four tips for you that you should do and a fifth one that you absolutely should not. Let's get started. Center lines are important in guitar building, so that's why all my templates have center lines on each of the pieces that need one. Center lines on the face of the template help you line it up very accurately on your body blank, but there is still room for error. When you look down on the template to line up its center line with the pencil line you've drawn on the body blank, it's easy to be off by just a little bit if you've tilted your head one way or the other. So tip number one is to extend the center line from the face of the template onto the edge. And the tool I use for that is one that I use in a lot of guitar building tasks. It's this little machinist square. Use the square and a really sharp pencil, or better yet a mechanical pencil, to draw the line carefully on the edge of the template. Make sure it lines up perfectly with the line engraved in the face of the template. Don't forget to repeat that at the other end. And now when you line the template up on the body blank, you can actually see that the line you drew on the edge of the template is touching the line you drew on the body blank. It's much more accurate than eyeballing it. The pencil line that you've drawn on the edge eventually will get smudged or even worn off from repeated use. You can always redraw it, but if you want to get extra fancy, you can score the edge with a really sharp knife. I like an X-Acto knife for that. And that won't get worn off, but it's not deep enough that your router would actually transfer that to the body blank. Tip number two is about attaching the template to the workpiece. There are a lot of things that you can use to do that and everyone has their favorite. Uh, let's run through a few of them now. I've got a couple of clamps here. Clamps are good for once you've attached the template to the workpiece, then you clamp that whole thing to your bench so it doesn't walk around while you're routing. But you would never use just clamps to hold a template on the body blank, for example. The most obvious choice is some sort of double-sided tape. You can't use just any double-sided tape that you find at a big box store or a dollar store. I, I quite like this brand. It's not as easy to find. You can't just buy it at the store. Uh, you'll need to order it online. It's a little pricier. It's kind of my favorite. I actually like tape and clamps to hold the whole assembly still while I'm routing. Tip number three is about drilling holes in your body blank. Templates will have various holes depending on the model. The tip is don't drill through the template. The holes in the template are just for marking a spot on the body blank where you'll drill later after you've removed the template. And in fact, all the holes, regardless of the final size in the body, are all one eighth of an inch. I like to use a brad point drill bit to mark the hole locations because it has a very sharp point and will mark the exact center of the hole location. A twist drill looks a bit different. It comes to a point, but it will make a mark that's a little bit harder to find the exact center of. Get a 1 8 inch drill bit, pass it through the holes, give them a little tap, just enough to make a mark in the wood so that you can see it after you take the template off. The reason that we don't drill through the templates is the holes are exactly 1 8 of an inch and the drill bit will fit perfectly in it. But if you drill through the templates to drill the actual holes, after two or three uses, the holes in the template will start to enlarge and then you'll no longer be able to find the exact center even with a brad point drill bit. So mark with the template, remove the template, and then drill. Tip number four is about being able to replace the template after you've removed it and get it back in the exact same spot. So for example, when you start with your rectangular body blank, and you've used your double-sided tape to attach the template. You'll probably trace around it with a pencil and you'll tap your drill bit through all of the holes to mark the body blank where you're going to drill at some point in the future. And then you'll remove the template. At that point, you would probably rough cut on the bandsaw. I don't have a rough cut example. I have a finished body here, but let's pretend that I've just rough cut this on the bandsaw and I need to reinstall this template to do the final routing. I can try to locate it by feeling my way around the outside, but that's not super accurate. The dead on accurate way to do that is to again use the drill bits, but this time instead of using the pointy end, we'll use the other end and in fact take two drill bits and put them through two of the holes in the template and push them in until they go into the corresponding holes on the body. And that way the template would be locked in place. Now that works also if you're switching to another template. So let's say for example now we've routed the outside of this body flush and we're happy with that. We remove this template and then you might want to route your neck pocket. The neck pocket template has the exact same bridge holes 
in it that are already drilled in your body. So again, double-sided tape on this side, push your drill bits through, and then find the holes that match in the body and the template would be locked in place. Now, one thing you'll find is even if you're using an old dull drill bit as your locating pin, once it's pushed through the template and into the body, it might be difficult to get out and you're yanking on the still sharp part. So what I did is I took two old drill bits and some scraps of wood, drilled some holes and epoxied them in place. So now what I do is hold on to a not sharp handle, push that through, and then as I say, I do two. And then you can locate those on the body and then your template is locked in place. Tip number five doesn't just apply to using your new templates, it applies to all parts of guitar building and that is practice on scrap. Always, always, always practice on scrap. You're probably excited to use the expensive piece of swamp ash that you've ordered or that beautiful piece of walnut that your grandfather gave you or the piece of your grandma's mahogany buffet hutch. Before you do, please, please, please find some pine or poplar at the lumber yard. It doesn't even have to be a full body blank size. You could just get a piece out of their scrap bin, attach part of the template to it, and practice your band sawing and routing skills. The more practice you get, the more confident you'll be, and the less likely you are to make mistakes. You will still make mistakes. I still make mistakes. But try to see them as an opportunity to learn and grow your skills and definitely grow your skills on scrap before you use something expensive. If you'd like to know how other double-sided tape has let me down in the past, and this one became my favorite, watch this video next.